The original botanic gardens were put in place as um, repositories of knowledge, I guess. And um, people brought plants from all over the world um, that were of medicinal value or that were, um, you know, of, of economic value and kept them in botanic gardens in order to study them and distribute them. And they were a, a public resource, basically. And what we're doing is we're, we're building sort of a digital version of this uh, data availability. So um, we're recording in this database freely available for, for anyone in the world to look at and for scientists to download and use. So we have nearly 600 species of plants in our database. Um, anything from these carnivorous plants with a fairly unusual life cycle where they actually consume insects through to cactuses, succulents and economically important plants like the lemon here behind me. Um, so we have a full range of trees and herbs in there. The data have been compiled over the last 40 years. Um, researchers all around the world have gone out into the field, into the wild where these plants grow and recorded their significant life events their growth, their survival, and uh, how many seeds they produce, their reproduction. And it's very important that we have these data because um, for species which are economically important, it enables us to sort of predict where they might grow and where best they might grow, uh, and also what kinds of harvesting rates might be appropriate. And also for endangered species um, and species of conservation concern, it enables us to put the correct conservation measures in place um, to keep them with us. We rely on plants for um, ecosystem services that are essential for our survival and well-being. They provide us with food, they provide us with building materials and shelter, and they provide us with clothing, and they even filter our water. And these kinds of ecosystem services are essential to maintain, um, uh, for, to sustain our lives on this planet. Well, we're hoping that by um, collecting data on nearly 600 plant species, and we'll expand this over time, it's not just those species that these data on growth and reproduction and survival are, are useful for. It's being able to predict for new species that we may not be in our database, if we have a close relative of theirs in our database, or a species that occurs in the same environment, then we can make predictions for species that we haven't encountered yet even. So one of the uses that this database can be put to is to develop um, recommendations for conservation. And down here we have the Killarney fern, which is a very endangered species in Europe. And Ireland has some of the most important populations of this still remaining in the wild. So again, we're hoping that by using the data in the database um, and by comparing species, we can develop some general rules for um, actions that we can take to conserve very endangered species. We presented this database at um, one of the largest international ecology meetings a few weeks ago in the USA. And there was great interest there from other researchers for using these data to um, answer questions like, how long do plants live for? Why do some plants get old and show signs of aging just like humans and other plants don't seem to do that? And um, so there's a massive interest worldwide in using these data to answer all kinds of questions um, about economically important species, as well as questions that are um, of interest just to ecologists and evolutionary biologists in general. For my own part, I'll be using these data to try and work out how the environment affects how plants go about making a living. Um, and in fact, we'll be extending this database to look in detail at one particular species, Plantago, which is uh, really common, and it occurs under a wide range of rainfall and temperature gradients all over the world. And we'll be asking people to go out and supplement this database by looking at populations basically in their own backyards. Over the next few decades, we're going to see huge changes in our environment as the climate uh, changes. And being able to predict which plant species are going to do well and which plant species are at risk of going extinct will be hugely important for maintaining the services that plants provide to us in the future.